market has remained volatile for some duration and right now we are observing the fact that we are forming some divergence we're getting a short term move to the upside bitcoin dominance is slowing down and that actually gives some momentum for the altcoins so even when the price is actually about to slowly go back up understand the fact that okay that can be just a trap dollar is actually bouncing back higher and you have major resistance coming that's great but the fact that dollar is going up at a time when bitcoin is slowly grinding higher you should actually consider the fact that this is possible because say for example if this turns in here then most likely what we are going to observe in the market is going to be something different right the market can actually show a lot of different things and one of which can be like okay the market shows you that it is about to run higher but then it's about to come back down maybe towards the level of 25000 26500 and then again bounce back up with that bounce it may attract a lot of people because we just put in a higher high higher low and another higher high but what's going to be even more interesting is that at that point if the price drop back below it is certainly going to create panic in the market because right now we actually have a lot happening in the macro the news the narratives if these guys are going to come out and do another rate hike it is literally going to add more unemployment more bank failures you know everything is going to be worse people are taking their money out banks are already having trouble so right now the only way you survive in this market is getting positive news and building through all of this so ripple the company is actually working as much as possible on the on demand liquidity side of it and xrp ledger as a ledger is getting more attention and slowly getting more developers entering into that space so now we have an ecosystem which is starting to build more and more utility side of things but we do understand the fact that okay the macro while you zoom out to compare in time horizons you kind of get this picture clear so we have 2020 we played out something similar so if that is about to come back and play out here we may actually get a wick lower a grade but the wick of pattern on that short term duration where you come down and then consolidate in one channel you get a spring and then you move back up that is absolutely positive yes dollar is right now bouncing we talked about this yesterday and few days back we had the thought processing okay dollar is showing a divergence it may actually go back up before it actually come back down now that divergence was on a daily chart right now the dollar is actually showing you it is moving up it's fine but the fact that bitcoin dominance is showing you the divergence and it is starting to slow down is positive because that is happening on a daily chart so now while you focus on the entire market the altcoins and all you do see like okay there is a trend forming there is a pattern evolving there is wave structure which is showing us okay there is a possibility we are going up right now we are bouncing right now inside each bounces we have now this would be like you're going in deeper zooming in so we are actually going to do that right now Welcome to the Sinovic Investor Family where the normal retail guys get to learn how to become the next top 10 person of this world. We talked about how bears are entering the pain is in the market. Right now we do observe the fact that the pain did come into the market. We have a lot of assets which are down 20 25 towards 50 person for this week alone and we have a lot of assets which are down 50 60% in last 3 to 4 months now you can find opportunities for sure but the perspective here while we look at XRP is the understanding that few assets are already building on divergence to slowly move back up say you go in to XRP on a macro chart right now first thing we need to look at is the current drop in the price of xrp as 30 percent which is decent you already reached a level of support great the rsi on a weekly is getting close towards a trend line a support that is bullish meaning 
historically speaking, while you reach that range, you slow down and you bounce, you reverse back up. So if that has been true for all these last four or five times, I would say, mm, okay, that kind of gives me more confidence to say we may have higher odds that that will play out this time around too. Now, yes, more or less it will play out like the altcoin market actually does. And that again will go back into what the Bitcoin is doing. So while we observe the fact that, okay, we have actually completed this, we may come back down, then go back up. So eventually we are completing that one leg with all these short term moves. So while we go into the opposite direction that we understand the market is slowing down, and if we try to put that narrative in, we kind of get the understanding like, okay, the market is doing like this. All these times, the market is giving us the narrative of clear wave structures in short term, in macro, in medium and all. It's just a little bit more confusing when you actually look at all of them together. So while you clear as much as possible and look at the key information, which is required to understand how the market is evolving, now that gives you a better perspective. Say, if you're bouncing from this range and you still reach just below 2000, now that can actually create a lot of leverage trading. A lot of people may actually go and completely bullish. But the fact that on the macro, you are still here, you haven't actually reached back towards this level. It's kind of like, okay, we may still come back lower. We may still drop back to the level of 1,600, 1,500 in either which has been a strong level of support. Now, that will be in line with how Bitcoin as an asset represents itself in this market. Because right now, we also have to understand that, yes, we are looking for a retracement to go back up. But this level of support, which broke to the downside, is key. Now, if we retest back up and reach close to 27,600 or even week towards 28,000, that still is going to be something which is attracting a lot of people to buy in and then the price go back lower, drop to the bottom. Now, on the short term narrative, if we look at the corrective action for this wave structure, say, for example, in Bitcoin, if you actually plot this one, two, three structure and say, OK, the correction for that looks like it's done. It's still OK. But the issue here, as we discussed earlier, is the major wave structure which would be like the bigger structure here and this big structure actually shows you the fact that the correction for this one is not yet completed and most likely scenario for that is literally going to be something like this where it can be a little bit more of a bloodbath now the bounce it can go back up towards 30,000 but the chances looks really odd because the last high is here so more or less we would be somewhere in the 28,000 ranges and then go back down. Now, how low? We'll have to see because with the market, the panic levels are going to be critical. Say the volatility is going to be really high. What do I mean? Say we were actually observing the divergence in the Bitcoin on the short term and we were buying into some assets, right? And Bitcoin, instead of bouncing from 26,500, it actually dropped to 26 or just below 26. So yes, you didn't get the absolute bottom for sure, but you actually saw the divergence and it still wicked lower, way lower than we anticipated. Now, look at the RSI on that same time horizon. It shows you a double bottom pattern, which kind of gives you an advantage saying, okay, there is a possibility that price may bounce back up and it's not confirmed yet, but it is a possibility. Now that's short term again. So if you are a macro buyer in the market, then I would think like, okay, if that's me, I will actually be buying assets which are being, you know, whooped by the market. Say it's down 50, 60% already, it has strong fundamentals, and you are having opportunity because the Bitcoin is pushing the market lower. Great. Now, Bitcoin has already raised this level, which was acting as a support for some time now, almost close to a month, it was not that easy to hold on to that thought process saying like, okay, we're going down, we're going down, we're going down, and the market was not going down. So people kind of think like, okay, this guy is joking. But after this time, 
see, at least from this top, we were actually talking about the possibility of the market is about to drop. And it's been 28 days since we started saying that. So people may think like, okay, this is not coming in and we are getting bored and the market is about to go higher and the market come back down. So the first level of support is going to be 24,000, after which a major level is going to be close to $22,000. So while the crypto market moves along with Bitcoin, we also understand like there is a correlation between the stock market and crypto market. Great. We are looking at it right now. The Dow Jones is still inside this pattern. It has not yet invalidated that structure. Great. But if you actually remove all this and just uh, look at what the strength look like, it does show you like, okay, it is actually slowing a bit down. Now, while looking at the price action during the same time, it's like, okay, the price action is also declining. So it doesn't actually give you a huge divergence as a factor. Instead, it is suggesting, okay, it is still following the price, which is positive. Now, one of the biggest steps for us here would be, okay, go on a macro time structure and see like whether the divergence has already played out. So this was a higher high on a monthly, which formed from 2018 towards 2021, and we've corrected. So in the meantime, you actually had one range where the divergence was valid, the price corrected lower, heavily, great. Now this is the next leg where the divergence is forming right now. So if you actually compare two peaks, it is showing you some divergence. So the possibility of another major drop to the downside cannot be neglected. But now that's on a monthly chart. When that's going to play out, maybe in three months, maybe in six months. And between that time, are we going to watch the market running to the upside is going to be the surprise factor here. Now, if the Fed is actually going down the path, as they just talked about, hiking another 25 basis point, it may not look good for the market because the cost of money is just going up, which is slowing down businesses. Even the banks are getting hammered. So you kind of get the point what's happening there. But one of the key points here we have to keep in mind is there is a possibility that the price is making a inverse head and shoulder pattern. Now, if it actually breaks lower, it kind of, you know, gets invalidated. But if that slowly bounce back up, break this level and retest. Now you are looking for a bounce and that's going to your confirmation where this is about to take off. Fine. Now you take the same perspective into XRP. You want to see like, okay, that's a weekly chart of XRP. I kind of get the macro picture. What am I looking at on a shorter horizon? Now, while you actually go into the shorter horizon, it kind of gives you the thought process of, okay, it's volatile. Now, it definitely is volatile, and that's how the market actually works. The market is kind of trying to be efficient, but we know it is not, because the people who trade that market is not efficient. We are human beings. We are not completely rational. Not all of us make rational decisions, and not all of us digest all the information available in the market, right? So right now, keeping all that market efficiency factor in the picture, we understand, okay, this is the common trend where the price has been respecting as respecting this as a support and resistance. Now, that being said, we do understand there are times when the market actually violates that range and goes parabolic. Now, we do have to understand, okay, let's paint it red. Why did that happen back then? That was the collapse of the FTX or the fraud of FTX, right? That was a 37% drop. But right now, you don't actually have an FTX which is collapsing unless something else comes into picture. Right now, we don't. And we've been correcting slowly, steadily to the downside to reach 0.4 as a support, which we've been talking. Now, we've been talking about this since we got this divergence here. The price was actually moving up at a time when the RSI was flat. Right? We were talking about this. Now, that goes back, right? The problem is time is the hard part. And while you talk about a divergence for like 40, 50 days and it's not playing out, people get confused and bored. And when you get bored, you start to think like, okay, let me go leverage. Let me go into that asset. Let me sell this asset. All of that is still in picture. Now, on a daily chart, what exactly are we talking about? We just saw a five-wave structure to the downside, which is a part 
of a macro. Now, this is my strong belief, which is a part of the macro three wave structure. So, is XRP just blowing off to you know thousands of dollars? Uh, maybe in 20, 50 years, who knows? But right now, the next move to the upside we are looking at is like 0.7 to 0.8 dollars, which would be great. Now, for that to happen right now, Bitcoin also need to go back up. So keeping that in mind, okay, XRP is staying here before it actually go back up is possible. Now, look at last time when you actually made the bottom here, you literally took like 37 days before you started bouncing back heavily. So that still is valid. Just putting that end numbers, it would look something like mid-June when we are bouncing back up. Now, take that thought process into Bitcoin side of things. Now, that becomes even more valid, meaning while you look at Bitcoin and say like, okay, if that's going to happen, the market is going to bounce back up and correct back down. And that would actually look like this. Mid-June, you may come back down and then start grinding back up. It is still possible because the way you look at the market is like, okay, last time when the market corrected lower, it took somewhere like 23 days and it did drop heavily, right? It was not a short-term drop. It did drop like 23%. Now, this time around, it's a little bit different. It's not only the short-term wave structure which has to correct, it's the medium-term wave structure. The one, the two, and the three needs to be corrected. Now, we see this all the time in different assets. Say you go into silver chart. This is what you're observing, right? You do have a short-term three-wave structure. Most likely, this is going to come back down and then bounce back up. But then you actually go back and you actually see that historically, this happens all the time. So you get the one, the two, the three, you correct back down to the second and then you consolidate. Now you do get issues and then move back up, but the market gives you a clear picture. Now, while you're here, you go on to the macro, on the silver, because now we just saw like, okay, we do have the short term moves, but now look at this. We talked about the short term move of three wave structure and a correction to the downside that came here. But after that, you look for the macro and you see that also come back down to test this level. So your correction can be heavy. The short term leg can be 10, 12 percentage. The medium term can, now this is really volatile one, 40 percent. And then you will see the next one, which is 42, 43 percent. So that is coming in the market. Most likely if silver has already completed that, Short term leg would be coming back down to correct somewhere close to $20 and then bouncing back up. Now, go back to the history. And while we talk about the history, we do understand the fact that, yeah, that's not only on the short term. We see that on the macro, right? You come back to test this range. Now, take this back into Bitcoin and into XRP to see like, okay, what does that really mean for Bitcoin market? What does that actually really mean for XRP as an asset? Right now, we are talking about the same perspective where you get the one, the two, the three, after which you may correct back down. That's why I was saying like, okay, $20,000, $22,000 in Bitcoin should not be creating panic. Now, for sure, it's going to create panic. We've been talking about this from some time that that is a possibility. Bitcoin can actually drop from almost a month and it is dropping. It's slow. It's steady. It is dropping. But while that's reach here, you now have to look at the altcoin market because not all altcoins are created the same and you will see the market slowing down. So when the market actually slows down, understand one, the two, the three is going to correct back down. And now when we say it's going to correct back down, we need numbers to understand like, okay, how deep are we really going to go if that's about to play? We have another 10% on average in the altcoin market to actually reach that range. You need to pay attention to. You're actually observing the fact that, okay, this asset is making a pattern which kind of sounds like, okay, it is slowly rounding back up. Now, it can go up, it can come back down, but the trend kind of gives you an idea that, okay, something is valid for some reason. So even if we see volatility, this is the macro narrative which is playing out in the market. So short term, 
it's good you can zoom in you can understand because that gives you the ability to say like okay i'm looking at bitcoin i'm looking at the short term bitcoin price fluctuations and i think there is something evolving right now where the market can actually give me positive movement but don't get into that positive movement unless the market confirms the trend is shifting because otherwise it can turn red so right now if you receive value please do hit that like and subscribe button i'll meet you guys on the next video bye for now